James. LeBron James all the way in. Here comes Simmons the other way. Three on two. Simmons eludes the defender and lays it in with that. Certainly the length altered that shot. Got it a good one. Steps. Punches. Good play right there. Jennings. Throw down. A foul. Irving. Oh, splits the defense with the dribble. <laughs> You ready to move on? Let's move on. What are we talking about? Let's talk about a very surprise first-round pick. I would say a lot of people say that he's probably the surprise of the draft or the steal of steal the draft. Steal of the draft, for sure. And that is Cal Kuzma out of Utah. What do you... And uh, just to preface this, guys, so there's an article on the Real GM. If you guys don't know, it's a good basketball website to get your news and information. Not a plug, not an affiliate. Just like to plug it out there. Uh, you know, they said... Kyle Kuzma said to, uh, I believe it was Rob Palenka, just mm -hmm. talking about that everyone said I would be a six-rounder or undrafted. Mm -hmm. So basically this article goes on to talk about how, you know, everyone was telling him this, but he kept working hard and, you know, impressed everybody at the combines, at the tryouts, the private workouts. Yeah. Everyone, he proved everyone wrong and he got picked in the first round. What do you think of Kyle Kuzma's play? I mean, he's crushing it for the Lakers right now. He's definitely playing better than Lonzo Ball is. He has more yeah. of a look <laughs> of a star than he does. So I like Kuzma. I think he plays with a lot of, like, just passion on the court, obviously. Right. And he plays very high tempo, and he's aggressive. And he fits the style of the NBA right now, and it's showing because he's scoring a lot of buckets right mm -hmm. now. I like the kid. Yeah. Just coming from my perspective, so I went to the University of Utah. I worked for the coaching staff, mm -hmm. or, you know, coaching film and all that stuff for Kyle Kuzma. And what I saw was just, I think, what I saw, what I'm seeing right now in the NBA is definitely not what I saw in college. Okay. Definitely after all the games, because I usually worked all the home games, I just didn't see the, I just didn't see this. Like the intensity? The intensity, the, the passion. The kind of smart shots. I mean, yeah. sometimes he, I mean, like in just in the NBA, he doesn't take, he takes some ill advice shots sometimes, but it's well within the system. Yeah. And I think uh, Luke Walton is doing a hell of a job as the coach. I agree. And I just think that I don't want to like diss on the head coach, uh, Kristoyak from uh, Utah. Utah. Okay. I don't want to like diss him, but it definitely seemed like they didn't want to play through him. And it, I just didn't see these numbers stand out. Like, he didn't stand out to me at Utah when I was watching. Well, and that's definitely the reason. I mean, people were basing his college performance on where he was going to go. Mm -hmm. So he, uh, I mean, just through that hard work he put in through the off season and preparation for the draft, he boosted his stock about as much as anybody could, really. Yeah. So more credit to the kid. He's looking awesome. Yeah. Definitely steal of the draft so far. Uh, him, it's between him and Dennis Smith Jr., who, mind you, went still in the top ten, right. but he could have, he should have gone earlier, to be honest. Yeah. So sh I mean, it's looking like so Kuzma should have gone a little earlier too. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's kind of one of those things. Also, with like Jordan Bell, Kyle Kuzma, mm -hmm. these guys should have been taken a lot earlier, and also, well, in Bell's case, not traded to the Warriors, which yeah. is dumb on the Bulls' part, but. You know, Kyle Kuzma is one of those players that will continue to grow. He'll continue to get better. I think he's better at the small forward, even though he's listed as like a power forward. Mm -hmm. I just think he has. I think he's a good enough ball handler to where he could come up with it, or you know, take people on the drive. Yeah. Instead of playing the power forward, and I guess an interesting question would be: Would you consider starting him? There's been questions or like rumors that he might start at some point. Would you start him over, let's say, like a Brandon Ingram or a like Julius Randle? I wouldn't start him over uh, Ingram. I think Ingram is their best player. Or, I mean, if he's not already, he's going to be. He has the most potential and upside out of all of them, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But Kuzma, Julius Randle, it's up for debate whether I would pick which one I would pick. But I, I, why not just keep him at the sixth-man spot and let him keep coming off the bench? It never hurts to have, a, like, a super sub so to say. Let's use yeah. FIFA terminology. It's ne it never hurts to have that guy who can come off the bench and score 25 points in a game. So keep, keep him there. Let him develop. And if he's just too good to keep out of the starting lineup, then do it. But right now, I think he's great where he's at. Yeah. What do you think? Where would, you, would you start him? I think I would start him, honestly. Okay. 
this may be controversial. Controversial. What I'm about to say, Incoming. but I think Kyle Kuzma, the way he's been playing and the way that I see him fit in the system, I think if you start him and just kept him playing going on, yeah. I think you'd do better than Brandon Ingram. Really? You're taking Brandon Ingram out for Kuzma? I would take him out for Kuzma, and I think Brandon Ingram should be the super sub. Because I feel like Brandon Ingram, when he came out of the draft, every, he was really hyped up. He was supposed to be the next Kevin Durant, right? Yeah. That's what people were saying. I don't see that in him, honestly. I think it's a... If, uh, like, I don't want to be disrespectful, because I think Brandon Ingram's a good player, and I don't want to say he's like a store brand of like a cereal compared to like Kyle Kuzma and stuff like that. But I don't think in terms of comparing the two, I think Kyle Kuzma has a higher ceiling than Brandon Ingram. I think, I think they hyped up Brandon Ingram's ceiling because of this Kevin Durant comparison because okay. he's tall and lanky. Same thing with Lonzo and Magic Johnson. Yeah. I just think Brandon Ingram is one of those players that he'll get his 16 to 17 points a game, mm-hmm. but as a six man. I think he works better as a six man, and I think Kyle Kuzma gives you a lot more than just points. I think he gives you rebounding. He gives you scoring, and I think he wants it more. Defense, too. He's Defense pretty, is pretty good. good on D. You know, yeah, I just think in terms of who wants it more, I think Kyle Kuzma wants it more. Not saying that Brandon Ingram's not hungry for it or anything mm-hmm. like that. No disrespect to him. But I just think Kyle Kuzma deserves to be in the starting role over him. Okay. Well, well, let me say this. Let me ask you this question, I guess. Okay. We've only seen this. You were around Kyle Kuzma in college, and you said you didn't see the passion and intensity that he's shown so far in his NBA. Who's to say this isn't just a phase for him? You know, maybe he's just having this intense moment of, I want to be a star. Who knows if he'll regress back to his college, college performance or level of intensity, mm-hmm. which we're seeing right now with Lonzo, the alternative, where he is not intense at all on the court. Like, his aggression is not there. Doesn't seem like he's all super passionate about being the man. Right. And it's showing. But how do you know? How do we know it's going to last for Kuzma if it wasn't already there before? Maybe it was just a draft hype-up thing to get himself higher up in the draft. Right? Right. I just so. I think it's a possibility. I, I, at this moment, am still keeping Brandon Ingram in, like we said. Okay. But what, all-star break, who knows? If Kuzma is not slowing down at all and his pace is up, put him in there. Why not? I mean, it all depends on if they're winning games, you know? I right. feel like if you, you don't mess with a good thing. So if the Lakers are winning games and they're doing all right, they're already on pace to be better than – what uh, pretty much everybody anticipated them doing. Mm-hmm. I, I think I said they were going to do okay in our little preseason discussion. Go back and watch that because I did say that. But if they're winning games, keep it the way it is. If Kuzma is just crushing it too much, then put him in. That's what I'll say. It's the same thing with Lonzo. Wait and see. It's yeah. too early. I don't know, man. Like, just looking at their stats right now, I know we're only, like, into week three mm-hmm. of the NBA action. I just think, like, if we look at... They both are scoring about the same amount of points, like 15 a game. But Kuzma is shooting it at a higher percentage than uh, Brandon Ingram. Mm-hmm. Brandon Ingram's shooting it at, like, a... Pedest- not, I wouldn't say pedestrian, but he's shooting at an NBA average 45. Yeah. Meanwhile, Kuzma's shooting at a 56 from the, fle- from the field. So I just feel like you get more productivity from Kyle Kuzma right now and I think if you keep him on the floor he'll grow to a higher level than I think than Brandon Ingram but you know like we said it's up for debate you know maybe he's the super sub maybe Brandon Ingram's the super sub Mm -hmm. we're gonna have to wait and see maybe even just take out uh, Julius Randle maybe yeah Julius Randle to me is he's good but he's not the guy like, I feel like he is more hi- overhyped than what you were saying Brandon Ingram was. I feel like he had more hype than he probably should have gotten. I feel like I need to see more from him. Yeah. But he's big, and you need those guys on the court. I, I feel like his, his role is a little bit more important than whatever Brandon Ingram and Kyle Kuzma. Like, I feel like you could interchange those two, mm-hmm. but I feel like the Lakers would suffer more for having Julius Randle not on the court. Yeah, I mean, 
It, we'll see, man, because I think this Laker team will be eventually good, mm-hmm. whether LeBron comes or not. That's rumored. We'll we'll have to see, man. I mean, I like this team so far. I'm a Celtics fan. It's hard to admit it, but this team is looking pretty good, and they're promising. Yeah. And I think potentially down the future, I'm I'm gonna go against Lavar Ball's judgment and say they're not gonna make the playoffs this year, but next year could be a possibility. Especially, I mean. For sure, if LeBron comes, they're a playoff team. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And he would mentor all these guys very well. I mean, and and then you have, like, Brooke Lopez putting up 36 or 34-point games, whatever he did the other yeah. night. <laughs> There's <laughs> always a chance that these guys can just blow somebody out, you know? Mm-hmm. There are a lot of uh, young kids who all have a lot of upside, and then you have some really good defenders on the team, like uh, Caldwell Pope is an uber defender. Right. You know, so... Their team, their team is built for moderate success right now. So mm-hmm. give them a year. All these guys are going to end up being above average players in the NBA for the most part. Yeah. 